Welcome to a WATD Political Forum. I'm Christine James, your moderator. The city is Brockton and the race is for mayor. The incumbent, Bill Carpenter, is facing three challengers, Chris McMillan, Jacob Taggart, and Christopher Hopgood. Brockton's preliminary election is September 22nd, and the top two vote-getters will face off in the general election. That's on November 3rd. Joining me in studio to ask questions are Monday night talk show host, that's Kevin Tachi, WATD's Charles Mathewson, and Mark Lindy. He's the general manager of Brockton Community Access, which is also taping this show. And you can get a schedule of when they'll be repeating this on their Facebook page. Our format at WATD is simple. We have opening and closing statements. In between, we'll ask a round of questions, including a lightning round, my favorite part. That's where the answer is either yes or no, or two sentences tops. Reporters will advise you whether they want a yes or no answer or one or two sentences. And it really is yes or no or two sentences, which we find everybody running for office has a hard time with. That's why we do it. And if we have time, we may let the candidates ask each other some questions. We ask that you please keep your answers under a minute. We're on a tight schedule. This is radio. And if you don't keep it uh, under a minute, well, you know what happens. That's right. The bell and the bell is here. Uh, we have three of the candidates here today. We've got Chris McMillan, we've got Chris Hopgood, and we have Jacob Taggart, Brockton Mayor, Bill Carpenter, the incumbent, chose not to attend today, as I just found out, uh, I think, 10 minutes ago. Thank you, Kevin Tachi. Now, we chose the opening and closing order randomly out of the official WATD newsroom koozie. We're going to start <laughs> with right here. See? You know, it's not a legend or a myth. It's, it's real. It's classic. It's real. Isn't it? It's real. We even have a backup with Mount Rushmore on it. The order is Chris McMillan, Jacob Taggart, Christopher Hopgood, and at the end we reverse the order. Opening statements and closing statements, two minutes max. If you want to go shorter, that's fine, but no longer than two minutes. So uh, say hello again, and let's start with Chris McMillan. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. I want to thank WATD and uh, the BCA for hosting this event. Uh, my name is Chris McMillan. Uh, sorry if I appear a little horse bit. I've been fighting a, fighting a cold. I'm almost done with it right now. Uh, I'm putting myself, I put myself into this, uh, this election because I have the most experience of all candidates in this election right now for, for mayor. I had eight years experience as a city councilor and one year as a city council president. I know how the city works and how it's supposed to be, <coughs> excuse me, how it's supposed to be run. Right now the city is in deep trouble financially, <coughs> so I'm so sorry, financially. Uh, with, a gr uh, with Moody's uh, downgrading the city's bond rating from an AA3 to an A1, that means to the city of Brockton that it is critical that any type of uh, bonding that we have to do in the future is no longer going to be a uh, good interest rate. It's going to be a poor interest rate, and that's, that's really bad news for the city. It's bad news for the residents. It's bad news for everyone that uh, deals with uh, the bond rating as far as the city goes. Uh, I bring in, like, like I said, the, the experience. I bring in um, fighting this right now to, to, as running for mayor to reduce the crime, to bring back the teachers to the schools, to make this a better place for us to live in, to make sure that the community is, well, accessible to any outsiders. Anyone who steps inside the city of Brockton uh, area or the, the borders, I consider as a family. So we have to make sure that everyone is treated the same. All residents are treated the same. Right now, we're not getting that. Uh, the mayor is focused on just a certain few, which are what I call are the uh, special interest people. Uh, he's, he's helping out his friends, his neighbors, or whatever. Uh, so I, as a mayor, would be changing that completely. Uh, everyone is entitled to be heard and be respected. And as mayor, I'll make sure that's that will be done. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Chris McMillan. McMillan, his opening statement. Now we're going to go to Jacob Tagger. Uh, I want to make sure I say thank you to WATD and BCA for holding this forum. This is a, a great opportunity for the voters to learn about the candidates and why they should vote for them. Uh, I want to make sure I mention that I was the first person that announced to run against the mayor, and I did so because I believe that I'm the right choice, especially with my, my long managerial background. And that's you know what the mayor does, is the, man, the mayor is a manager. He's a manager of people, he's the CEO of the city. Uh, so clearly my, my priorities are public safety, job creation, business development, fiscal responsibility, youth empowerment, transparency, and accessibility 
for all residents and businesses. As a businessman currently, community activist, coach, parent, lifelong resident of Brockton, my background and experience, as well as lack of political ties, makes me the only real choice for real change in the city of champions. And I want to make sure I, I highlight that. Brockton is the city of champions, and I truly believe that. I ask you for your vote on September 22nd. My name is Jacob L. Taggart Jr. I am running to become the next mayor of the city of champions. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was Jacob Tagger. Now we'll get our opening uh, statement from Christopher Hopgood. Hi, my name is Christopher Hopgood. Uh, I'm running for mayor, and uh, I firmly believe that we need to strengthen our police department. We need to go ahead and correct the city of Brockton because it's gotten out of hand right now. Where well, we need to go ahead and have more protection. And we, but that isn't all that we need. What we need is to go ahead and have community effort and community participation. They need to go ahead and, if they see a crime, report it. Right now, they're living in fear that if they report a crime, retaliation is going to come back against them. And it shouldn't be like that. At 10 years old, I used to be able to walk up to the Dairy Queen, which is only a block and a half away from my house. I wouldn't let my kid go outside right now at 10 o'clock at night in fear of him being abducted or something happening to him. And it's, it's really gotten into a sad state that we need to go ahead and correct. And that's, but my big issue is protection. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a third candidate and that's Christopher Hopgood. Now we're gonna go to our question portion and Kevin Tachi, this is your show. It's Monday Night Talk. <laughs> so you ask the first question and tell me who it's directed to. I will tell you, I was kind of torn between three different questions. There's so many things that are going on in the city of Brockton, but hearing each one of these gentlemen speak uh, about uh, a particular issue, and it's something that's going on day in and day out uh, and night after night, and that is what we're seeing as far as uh, crime, gun violence. Uh, I know that the past mayoral administrations, including the current mayor, ha have used their partnerships with other law enforcement agencies. They've conducted sweeps. Uh, pushed for manpower, use of technology like video surveillance and shot spotter uh, to combat crime and gun violence. Is this enough to be able to, you know, take care of what's going on in the city streets or is there something else that needs to be done? And Who's it directed at? Uh, we'll start with uh, Mr. McMillan. Well, thank you, Kevin. <clears throat> There's a lot to be done. Um, shot spotter and the video cameras are a reactive tool. Uh, we need to reach out to the community and have more community uh, uh, meet c policing, uh, community programs, uh, touch base with the youth. Uh, I want to have a day camp or summer camp with the youth, with, with the police running it, so they can interact more with the police officers, so they're not afraid to talk. We need to expand on the neighborhood watches. Right now, we're not doing that well on creating the neighborhood watches, and a lot of people are complaining about problems. They don't know how to have it solved or who to contact. So it's my, my job as the mayor is to expand on these programs. Um, the sp shot spotter is a nice tool. It's, uh, it's a very expensive tool right now. Uh, I could see it. I'd rather use that money to hire new police officers tend to spend $600,000 on a piece of equipment that we already have a small one right now. It's a one-mile radius. They want to expand it, and they already have actually signed a contract, which is a little late. Uh, for six hundred thousand dollars to expand to the five mile radius, but that's the ways to me. It's it's police officers that we could have we could have uh, hired. Thank okay. you. Next, Jacob Tagger. We'll go with Mr. Tagger next. Yes. Thank you. This is a good question. Uh, we do need strong relationships with other law enforcement <laughs> agencies, but uh, we also need a strong relationship with our community. And again, me being a community activist for over several decades, a couple decades now, I think that's an asset I bring. Um, as as mayor of the city of Brockton is community engagement. That is something that we, we definitely need to have stronger ties to our community, community policing. We need to, of course, be more rea I'm more more proactive as opposed to the reactionary approach we're taking right now because that's what we're doing. We're only reacting to crime. We're not preventing it. Um, I would rather see, as Mr. McMillan you know, just stated, and, and I stated yesterday, that $600,000 that we just invested in equipment, I would have rather invested that in people 
and police officers on the streets and programs for our youth, our young people. We need to reach out to our young people. I was saddened to see that young man, um, 15 years old, you know, shooting. What are we doing? We're missing something. We're missing opportunities with our youth. So it's a very important uh, issue, and we definitely need to reach out and build strong relationships with our community. Same question, Mr. Hopgood. Well, absolutely. I, I agree with both gentlemen here in the fact of we we have to have community effort. You know, it, it has to be done because... I mean, it's just gotten crazy. It really has. I mean, the city of Brockton is not the city of Brockton that I grew up in. And I, I dislike everything that's happening. You know, I'm willing to go ahead and step forward as mayor to go ahead and correct some of these problems if possible. I want to put more police on the street. I understand that, sure, you can put them on the street in the summertime, but then in the wintertime, they're going to need cruisers. And you're going to have to go ahead and have that extra finance for that. I understand all this, but you know what? It has to start somewhere. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Okay, uh, let's go now to Mark Lindy. And Mark is the uh, general manager of Brockton Community Access. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, gentlemen, for participating. Um, talking about experience, Chris McMillan stressed it in his open. Jacob talked about lack of political ties. Chris didn't talk about it, and this is an issue, okay? Being, having political ties or having experience, which one's better? I'm gonna go to Jacob first, only because um, I'm kind of a pay your dues type of guy, so pay your dues is done in different ways. There are different ways of serving, <laughs> so I'm just curious on the take on, on that experience issue in question. Um, I firmly believe that out of the four candidates, I have the strongest managerial background from my professional, you know, from my professional career, what I've been doing since I was a senior at Brockton High School. I've been program director. I currently manage over 35 employees currently right now. I don't know any of the other candidates, including the mayor, at least until he was elected, that had that managerial experience. I'm a leader. I'm a coach. I train. That's what I do. As far as uh, the political ties, I will say that I know for a fact I'm definitely the only candidate and uh, that doesn't have any ties to any, any special interest group. No one controls me. No one controls me at all. Nobody makes decisions for me. I'm surrounded by good people that are working hard, out there walking every day, meeting people, and, and that's who, who is beside me on this journey. Um, and again, I, I have to keep stressing, I was the first one to step out. Before any any issues came up with, and I'm going to say this, federal grand jury investigations or anything, before the current mayor was a little bit weakened, I stepped out and challenged him. And to me, that's leadership, stepping out and putting yourself out there. Um, so the experience thing, I, there's different levels of experience, maybe on a city council, but that's with a group of 10 other people. It's not a you know one-man show. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Same question? Same for question Chris for Macmillan. Chris and then the other Chris, the two Chris. <laughs> no, I, I, I absolutely uh, disagree that uh, Mr. Tagger is the most experienced when it comes to this matter. I sat on the city council for eight years. I was elected by my fellow councilors as the president at the city council, of the city council for in 2010. Uh, when the mayor at that point leaves the city, I, as a city council president, am considered the, the mayor. Um, as far as managing goes, as the city council goes, yes, there are 10 other city councils beside myself at the time, but we also oversee all the department heads, all the department, uh, empl empl all the employees of the city. We, take, we field all the phone calls from the residents complaining about certain things. So we manage the city that way. We're the legislative body. The mayor is the executor. So uh, I strongly disagree that... Uh, Having a managerial background, um, as Mr. Tagger has, and saying that uh, because I was a city council, I have zero or not as much uh, experience, I strongly disagree. And um, as far as political ties go, I know the council is on there. I will be able to work with the councils, and that's what the mayor has to do. You have to work Five as a team. Five seconds. 
So thank you, Christine. So um, that's that's. I have no political ties. I have no special interest ties. My 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 concern. Thank you. Is the city of Brock? Sorry, I do use that bell. I love that bell. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> just been Tony O'Brien. I've been Tony O'Brien. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Let's go now to uh, questions for. Uh, did, I'm sorry, Chris, Chris, Chris. I'm sorry, we didn't get you. Chris Hopgood. Yes. <clears throat> same question. Um, same question. Uh, I have no political ties. Okay. But what I what, what I lack in political ties, I lack in common common skills and knowledge with people and how to deal with people. I'm a great listener. I feel if you turn around, you listen with your ears and keep your mouth shut, you'll turn around and you'll learn a whole lot more. And I can accept that. And for that reason, you know, City Hall, if I'm elected mayor, is going to be an open house. It's not going to be an open house, to say, you know. But, I mean, <laughs> people are going to be able to come in there and get common public access to, like, financial records or whatever, you know. People are interested in how their tax dollars are being spent. They're interested. I know I am. <clears throat> and when I went down there, I couldn't even get a copy of the records. They, they railroaded me all around, and I ended up back in Bill Carpenter's office, and I left there with nothing, no knowledge or anything. So, I mean... That is something that will never happen under my administration. I guarantee that. Thank you. That was Chris Hopgood. Now we're going to go to Charles Mathewson. Questions for the candidates uh, for mayor here in the city of Brockton. Hey, guys. I grew up in Brockton, Jacob Street, East Side. And when, when people uh, learn that of my uh, spotted past, they always ask the same question. What neighborhood uh, are you from? So let's get that out of the way. Chris Hopgood, what neighborhood? I'm from the west side. I've lived there for 53 years. Uh, I live right on the corner of oh. Ash and Boylston. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I live right on the corner of Ash and Boylston. I've lived there for 53 years. My family has lived there for 70, over 70 years. Okay, just the neighborhood. Yeah. Mr. Taggart. Richmond Street. When I was a kid, we called it Richmond Street. Um, Richmond Street Projects, but it's Richmond Street Housing Development. Um, but that's where I'm from, Richmond Street. Okay, Chris McMillan. I grew up in the uh, center of town, Glenwood Street, which is near uh, the, new, the new Vincente's uh, market. Hey, um, I uh, <clears throat> I asked a did a little survey of people that I know from Brockton and and surrounding towns. Uh, I, I thought I would get a variety of questions from them, and I was astonished to get one one question that people wanted me to ask, and it is. Who in their right mind would want to be mayor of Brockton? Let's start with Chris McMillan. And that would be me. Uh, I care passionately about this city. That's why um, I entered the race late. And yes, Mr. Tag was the first to enter uh, to challenge the mayor. But um, with my, my background, my experience, I felt that I was a better fit for the city. Um, I was born and raised in the city of Brockton, 51 years old. My criteria would be for the residents of the city of Brockton. So I'm passionate about the city. I mean, and all three of us are. And there's no way you can you know, say we're not because we wouldn't be running right now. We want to change the city up. You know, and either or. It doesn't, to me, you can vote all three of us, uh, one of us in, as long as it's not this mayor because this mayor is crushing this city right now. So as far as I'm concerned, I think I have the most experience. I know I can get the, uh, do the bad job. But if I'm not the elected one, I hope one of these two will be. Thank you. Mr. Taggart, is it the million-dollar salary? Uh, yeah. What is it that makes funny you story? Be mayor? Funny story about that is I, when I ran for councilor at large two years ago, and I was speaking with the election commission, uh, Mr. McGarry. I didn't even know there was a stipend, so I never it would ha never had anything to do with money. Um, I think it's a great question. I do want to um, compliment these two gentlemen sitting beside me. Uh, this is a tough thing. It's a tough on your family. Um, but why wouldn't you, if you're from Brockton, why wouldn't you want to be the mayor of the city of champions? Like this is a, I'm so thrilled to be here with you guys. I wish everybody really could understand that. This is what it's all about. And I, I take that burden on my shoulders because it's not a burden. This is an absolute pleasure. Um, you know, as, as Mr. McMillan had just said, we all firmly believe in who we are. And, you know, you know, each, each of us are going to think, we, you know, we're better and suited for the position. I know I'm better suited for the position. I know who I am, just like these gentlemen believe who they are. 
um, I'm doing this for my family and friends and the people I volunteer with on a regular basis and the kids I coach. I'm doing this because I absolutely love my city. And I have some people saying on social media, I have to give a shout out to the Brockton Hub 2.0 because they like, you know, saying things. Why does he keep saying he loves, loves the city? Because I do, people. I adore my city. All right. Um, so that's why I'm doing it. Why wouldn't I? My family and friends are here. So it's a great question, though. Great question. Chris Opgood, why do you want it? Why? Why do I? Why don't I? You know, I mean, I feel that just, you know, these two guys are just overqualified. They're, they're, they're great guys, you know. But at the same time, I feel like I can go ahead and get that qualified at some point. I want to correct my community. I want to help my community. That is why I want to go ahead and run for mayor. I feel like I can go ahead and really help with just a lot of issues. I mean, there's so many issues that the mayor turns around and deals with, from the police to the fire to the neighborhood watch to uh, the elderly to BIC to just there's so many issues, so many vast issues. I mean, I feel like I could really be a big help, and that's why I choose to run for mayor. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Now we're going to go back to Kevin Tachi. Questions for the candidates. I do want to add that uh, Charlie, no one to kind of uh, put talk about his Brockton bravado, but I also I spent time on every part of the city. Uh, North Junior High guy uh, lived on the east side, uh, South Carl Avenue. You name it, I've been around the city. So you're saying you were homeless? <laughs> <laughs> yes, pushing a carriage. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the question I want to ask is, th this, the past two years there have been a, a number of agreements that, that have taken place uh, under the current administration. Uh, I'll name a couple of them. We see a, a, an agreement regarding a casino at the, the, the fairgrounds, a settlement for the lawsuit for the power plant developers. Also, and this caused a ruckus during this past summer, was the new contract to AMR. You can either feel free to con uh, give your, your thoughts on all of these as a whole or pick one of them. Give me your thought on, on these deals, and do you feel that they hurt or help the city? We'll start with Chris, because we haven't given Mr. Uh, Hopgood a chance to go first. Well, as far as the casino goes, I am totally against it. I'm absolutely totally against it. I don't see that any revenue is going to go ahead and suffice the fact that we're going to have to go ahead and we have to get more police on the force and on the street because they're going to need protection. Regardless of how much security they're going to hire up there, there's going to be issues that are going to happen. And I don't see the benefit of putting it directly behind the Brockton High School. I mean, the kids have to walk by there, and this is the, this is the influence that they're going to be able to see. A casino. I mean, nothing good is going to come out of that. And as far as uh, the, uh, the power plant, I mean, we stood to go ahead and get, I believe, $4 million from them, and they had promised to go ahead and build a, uh, some kind of a L LED plant down there for uh, making lights, and they never, they never produced anything because they didn't get their power plant. So, I mean, it's like the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Thank you, Chris. Jacob, so I'll, ju I'll just run down. I'll, I'll just, could you just question repeat if, just if you the want. question? So we've seen a couple of different deals that have been done. Uh, not only the casino, the power plant, but also the AMR deal. These, of course, to try to generate, uh, you know, money for the city for them to be able to put it to good use. Uh, where do you stand on the deals? You can either pick one, or if you want to do a blanket statement on all of them. How do you feel that they either hurt or help the city? Um, again, I publicly spoke out. Uh, I was against the handling of the AMR Brewster contract. I was, again, the first person to speak out against that. The casino, again, as you know, the, the other gentlemen here are gonna say, the location, location's not a, a good location. I don't know too many places in the country where you have a casino next to a high school and the traffic concerns, you know, the traffic issues do concern me. I have a problem with, and Mr. McMillan touched on it about his relationships with the city council, you know, and I've developed relationships also with these people in the past couple of years. I've had a problem day one with the way the mayor is abrasive with dealing with the city council. If he just brought them to the table at all of these agreements, a lot of this, th these issues wouldn't come up. And that's the problem. There's too many egos. And I, again, I will say it, and I'd say it if he was here, uh, you know, Bill has an ego. And that's the problem. That's not what we can have in a leader. Le leaders can't have egos. You need everybody at the table, be transparent, include them in the process. And we don't waste taxpayers' time 
the, you know, suing the city council. Who does that? Five seconds. Five seconds. They're the best. <laughs> I want the bell too. But you know, I have an hey, issue worry, with the, you know how he, his approach has okay. been dealing with the city council. You, Thank Antonio you. Bryant. <laughs> I got a bell. Thank you. One bell for Chris. One bell for Jacob. <laughs> Do you need me to re to re repeat the question? Oh, those contracts are all. Uh, I've been fighting against the power plant since I was a city councilor uh, all eight years. We've been uh, adamantly against the power plant. We don't think it's going to bring uh, anything good to the city of Brockton. The design of that power plant keeps on changing, so uh, I don't trust this company. This it's guaranteeing the guaranteeing uh, the four million dollars. They keep on changing the design of the building. I'm hearing now that they might change it so it doesn't have a roof, so we can't uh, tax it as a building. So those are the f uh, few things that are changing around, which I don't trust with this company. The casino is absolutely I'm against it. Uh, I don't think it's the right spot, as Jacob uh, alluded to. Um, the hiring practices that they claim is going to hire the jobs that they're going to create. But you have to, there's a criteria that have to be qualified. You have to have a uh, background check. You have to do a Corey check. You have to do a, a, a credit check. And if you have any, any blemish on any three of those, you're not going to be qualified as a job, uh, to, ha to take a job there. So those things, those three, were never mentioned when they went out to, uh, to the vote. So that's why a lot of people voted in favor of this casino, is because they thought they were going to have jobs easily accessible, which they're not. Um, and the AMR... <clears throat> Excuse me. AMR contract was handled pro uh, improperly. And ten, matter of fact, seconds. matter of fact, uh, the government feels that it was handled improperly. That's why they are investigating that contract. Uh, they, that's that was in the Enterprise News. It's all it's all public information. So um, they're doing a grand jury study on it right now. Thank, Thank you. you. I got another one. <laughs> Two you bells. Mean, uh, <laughs> I got, got one, one bell. bell. <laughs> I got your one. Setting <laughs> 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 a record. <laughs> uh, I just piled it on the table. Sorry. Okay. Um, I have a diff <laughs> I have a different question that hasn't been asked so uh. far. Um, the mayor gets to appoint b boards and commissions. Yeah. The council gets to confirm them. If you were any of the three, you were elected mayor. How would you determine those appointments to the boards and commission? Because in, in in all respect, they're the second uh, part of the, another part of city government. They do important, really I incredible work, um, and nobody really knows who's on boards and commissions. And that's Mark Lindy asking the question. Who do you want to start with? Um, Mike's in front of Jacob, so I'll start I with I grabbed Jacob. the mic. I'm waiting for a bell here. Okay. Um, I want to make sure I pointed out when the mayor, um, the current mayor, Bill, was elected, I was, all, I was one of the people that were offered to submit my resume. I didn't call up and ask for it. Um, I was one of the people that were, um, you know, offered to, to sit on a commission. And I didn't accept it, didn't submit a resume because I didn't, I, I knew the reasons why, but you know that's just a, something I'll say about that. I believe in open communication, open dialogue. Um, commissions, I, I mean, these these are serious, serious issues that these people deal with, and you need to have qualified people. So I will always have a team around me of experts in that area that'll help me make the right decisions um, for people that are going to sit on these commissions. Right now, I think people are just being handed positions as and I'll. I'll I'm not going to pull any punches as political favors. Um, you know, we do have some really good people that have a lot of expertise on these commissions, but then we have some people that I honestly believe aren't qualified. And I'm sure they would tell you that they don't understand why, you know, based on qualifications. But, you know, again, something I would always do is bring experts to the table to discuss exactly who we put and why we Ten put seconds. them there. You know, you have to have a, a checks and balances system. Um, I'm a strong believer in that. That's why I like our current form of of government in Brockton, strong council, weak mayor. Um, thank you. Two, oh, two, 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 two. Just to remind you, you're listening to 95.9 <laughs> FM in Marshfield, WATD, the South Shore's news and information station. Okay. Now let's go to uh, next person. You want to go to Chris? Yeah, let's do Chris. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I definitely agree with uh, Jacob on uh, the fact of having people around me surrounding me giving me good advice because like I said I'm, gr I'm green going into this but at the same time I plan on surrounding myself with good advisors and getting good sound advice to go ahead and help me through this you know this influx you know trying to go ahead and get together everything and uh, that's really all I have to say about that I mean as far as the committee goes Okay, that was Chris Hopgood. Now you want to go to Chris McMillan. Yes, uh, as far as the uh, 
the members of the boards and the committees, they're actually in there on terms. So if you if I become mayor in January, I'm sure there's quite a few of them that have are going to be overlapped in their term uh, their term years. So um, I would ask for all all of their um, their uh, I'm sorry their qualifications their resumes, and then I would ask them to step down if they, I felt that they weren't qualified. Um, I can't force them to step down, but I'm sure there's going to be a massive exodus once this mayor is off. What he told the city council, and he's very, and this, which create, uh, created all the friction, is when he first became mayor, he told the city council he doesn't need the, them for any approval. He's going to load up the boards with his people. So he did. He loaded up the boards with his people. Um, then half of them are not qualified, and I agree. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to you know, get, get in there, and I'm going to clean house and put the qualified people in place that are there for the city of Brockton not there for any special interest people and so special interest groups. So thank you. Okay, let's go to Charles Matthewson now. Questions for the candidates. Brockton doesn't have a Secretary of State, but I'm going to ask a foreign affairs question. Uh, and that has to do with uh, the towns of Kingston, Plimpton, Pembroke, Hanson, and Halifax. The residents of those towns, for the most part, hate Brockton. Mm -hmm because of the <coughs> deterioration of the quality of life and the cost in the case of Kingston to build a, uh, a plant to remove the manganese from the water. This all has to do with, of course, Brockton taking water from the Silver Lake Basin. What would you do, each of you, to reverse that uh, trend and be friendlier to those neighbors? Let's start with Chris McMillan. Thank you. That's a very good question. It's a tough question. Um, you have to reach out to everyone and, and just uh, set, set them down. Um, the Silver Lake is, is owned by the city of Brockton. We run, that's where our main water supply is. Um, our other ultimate water supply, which was uh, forced on us by the state, is the desalinization plant. And quite honestly, it's not a, uh, it's not a good, good uh, plant to even to uh, look at. Uh, I would sit down with the, with the area towns and discuss what the issues are. Uh, I don't know uh, what their main issues are or, or problems are with the city, that they feel that uh, we're causing too much, or we're, we're drawing too much from Silver Lake. We do have the Avon Reservoir where we, can t we are taken from, but we don't take in the maximum right now. The desal plant back on that is, uh, is an antiquated piece of equipment. It's going to cost twice as much for water to be pulled out of there. And quite honestly, uh, purchasing that plant for the city of Brockton is not a not even on my radar. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of money that's going to cost the city of Brockton. But I would sit down with everyone from the towns to find out what their problem is and try to solve it. Thank you for raising the desal plan. I meant to include that in my question. So, Mr. Taggart, what um, do you do with the Silver Lake, Montponset, Oldham, Furnace Pond problem? Um, one, I, I, I want to make sure I uh, say that I would be, I wouldn't like our city either. Uh, we have better sports teams, you know, so that's probably why they, they're upset with us. Um, no, I mean, I respect everyone. They are our neighbors. Um, so, again, open dialogue, you know, try to find out alternate uh, water sources. We also need to look at um, ways to conserve and use recycled water, too. Um, but, you know, I'm not here to represent any of these towns. I'm here to represent the city of champions. Just like I don't have any issues with those places, but I'm worried about the residents of, of Brockton of Brockton first and foremost, not to disregard how they feel about certain things. I, I do believe we, we should all sit at, down at the table and discuss alternatives. But again, I'm not running for, for to be the mayor of any of those towns, and that's no disrespect to, I know those are your listeners, some of your listeners too, so I mean, I'm from Massachusetts. But again, I'm here to represent Brockton Mass, best football teams, basketball teams, all of that. So that's probably more of why you're, they're upset. But again, thank you. Chris Hopkins. Yeah, uh, I think I think you made the statement pretty good when you said uh, the surrounding towns. You know, usually when they have an important matter, they have a town meeting. Unlike Brockton, so it's no, no wonder they despise Brockton because we turn around and we're doing things pretty much out of context. I mean, they, you know, we're not even the general public doesn't get. We didn't get a vote on the Aqu uh, Aquadia plant. You know, we didn't, you know, and, and that, that's a biggie. I mean, you're talking about 
you know, seven million dollars a year plus for twenty years, and then you're talking about another eighty-eight million dollars to purchase it. East Bridgewater just had a water main break, and they were drawing off of it. But I don't, I don't remember them saying they were going to purchase the plant. Are we going into the water business? Can we, can we touch base with the query at some of it? I mean, well, if you want, I was actually going to ask a, just a quick yeah, follow-up follow up question. Just Kevin? a quick follow-up where you guys in just a, just a brief answer because I don't want to kind of cut sure. into my own question here. It's kind of being a little sure. being a little selfish here, but I'll Chris, double dipping again. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, did you not know? This is Monday Night Talk. <laughs> uh, Chris, where do you stand on a query in the letter of intent? Are you, are you for or against uh, uh, the purchase? Oh, totally against the purchase of the plant. It's an $88 million. Uh, they have a purchase price right now. Um, I don't know where they got the figure from. Uh, with the bonding rate, the way it, it has dropped, with the, with the old bonding rate, it was $110 million for a 20-year bond or $150 million across the city of Brockton. Okay. Uh, it's antiquated equipment. And quite frankly, my plan is to have the state purchase that plant and create a board, just like the MWRA, for other communities to tap off. Okay, tap right into. Quick answer, but all right. So, Jacob, right. where do you stand on the letter of intent for eighty-eight million dollars in purchasing it? I think it's laughable, completely laughable <laughs> that there's a letter of intent. Um, and on day one, it's going to be one of the first things uh, my my team addresses. We're going to get out of that contract. We're going to challenge the breaches. Mr. Hopgood, same question for you. Yeah. Well. Just a quick I answer. Mean, okay, yeah, quick answer. Uh, it's my opinion that they've already breached that con the contract mm -hmm. with us. They've already breached it. So, I mean, why can't we turn around, renegotiate it, bring in litigators, and have them go ahead and renegotiate a five-year contract, not a 20-year contract? It, this is a good follow into <coughs> the question I was going to ask, and that is, is you you mentioned it, in, in you might have each mentioned it in your opening statement, but uh, the city is having problems, as there was a recent report about the, the bond rating dropping. Where does fault lie with the city's plummeting credit rating and, and what needs to be done to put uh, Brockton in better financial light? We'll start with Mr. Hopgood first. Uh, to place the city in better financial light would probably be to bring in industries, bring in businesses, <coughs> and not run out the little guys because the little guys are getting killed with taxes right now. The tax rate, the water rate, everything's gone up, and they're getting killed. And we're running the little guys' businesses out of the out of the city and we're trying to draw in capital buildings you know and it's like right. we need the little guys gotta have them thank you mr hook good mr tagger same same question uh, your, your thoughts on uh, the the drop in the bond rating of course if you're going to be borrowing money to buy uh, a desal plan you're probably going to want the best bond rating that you you can get G give me your thought as to whose fault is it why uh, the city's plum why it's plummeting the credit rating and what needs to be done for Brockton to be better, seem better when it comes to um, uh, Moody's and, and agencies like that. Well, I mean, when you're the leader of the city, it's always your the responsibility always fall, falls on the leader of the city. So ultimately, that's some, uh, a burden on the mayor, the current mayor. And uh, if you look at his his personal finances, you know, we are, everyone is you no know, no one's perfect, but a person who's filed bankruptcy four times, um, one was withdrawn, but for you know three bankruptcies. Um, I, I don't know if anybody should be shocked. I mean, I know Mr. McMillan and, and Mayor Belzotti ran against him, and that this was an issue. So I don't know why this is even a question. Of, you know, the spending habits of this mayor. I mean, currently we have, you know, police officers two details for him. You know, that's the the spending is ridiculous with him. It's like he's, you know, money's going to expire or something. Um, I think we need to stop diverting hotel tax um, to like the Rock Stadium. We possibly need to look at selling that off. Um, also, the bond rating isn't important because it's a, it's indicative of his spending, but I'm not looking to borrow any money. I'm not looking to go in and bond out anything. I'm looking to get out of some of these bad failed deals, and we just keep getting into more and more. Um, but it, it's like I said, it's indicative of his spending habits from his whole life. Okay. Same same question from Mr. McMillan. I'll be interested to hear yours because you're a former. Council, council yeah. member, and I know that there's been a little bit of finger pointing between the mayor and the, the, the city council. So if you could answer that question, give me your thoughts on it. Uh, you sit in a big chair as a mayor, and uh, you take the re responsibility. And uh, if you read the Moody's investment uh, uh, <laughs> paperwork, it, when they downgraded our bonds, because it was poor fiscal management of the city, and they don't see uh, any any improvement if this basically if this mayor stays the mayor. Um, that's the that's the logist of it. It's all public uh, information. That's the report they came out with. They did mention about the uh, possible uh, lawsuit with the power plant, but that 
is what the mayor is pushing, saying, oh, that's, that's the only reason why. That is not the only reason why. That's a small factor. It's a fiscal, poor fiscal management of the city. And as a manager of the city, as, which is, the, which is the, the mayor, you have to pr- try to bring in more business, a more steady income. Um, these quick, make quick uh, money deals, make, make a million quick really here and there, are not the, won't suffice for the city of Brockton. We need a long-term plan, and that's what I'm going to bring in as the mayor. Okay. Mark Wendy? I've been through coverage <coughs> of a lot of elections, uh, five different mayors and more elections than I can count. Um, every year you seem to hear the same issues. Everything's old is new again. My question for you is priorities and balancing those priorities. We hear about everybody thinks public safety is important, education is important, um, financial management is important. What about the other issues? What about senior citizens, libraries, different quality of life issues in the city, DW Field Park, roads, things like that. How do you come up with your priorities that aren't the same priorities every single election? Who do you want to start with, Mark? Um, Chris Hopkins. Well, you mentioned about the libraries, and I think Siskin's going to be a great, Im- a great improvement to the library. You know, he, he was just appointed, and uh, I think he's going to be a great assist, you know, interest to the uh, public. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost track of the maybe, question. Maybe to rephrase a little bit, too, yeah. your priorities. Are they the priorities we hear about all the time, or are there any different priorities than any of the three of you can oh, bring to the table. Okay, no, no, no. I got, I got a lot of priorities and a lot of, a lot of things I'd like to go ahead and see fixed. Uh, a ten-year-old boy come up to me the other day, and he asked me. He says, "Hey, if you do get elected, he says, can you turn around and make sure that there's sports put back in middle school? You know, and this is a kid that's turned around. And he's ready to go ahead and go into high school. He wants to go ahead and he's interested in sports, and there's nothing available for him." I mean, that's something I need to talk to Kathleen Smith about. But, uh, you know, it's, it's small issues like that that turn around and hold my interest because it's community. Okay. Same question for uh, Jacob. I'm sure people would like to speak about different issues or just have no issues at all. But the fact of the matter is, is it's not safe in Brockton right now. So first and foremost, public safety. And I will say the flip side of that is, you know, opportunities for our young people. Public safety is the number one priority of it will be of my administration and it should be of the city right now. Um, So violence is up. People, like I said, people don't feel safe. Our residents should feel safe. That's something that they they deserve. They deserve to feel safe. You know, I had to watch a video uh, of a young man get shot in broad daylight right near the high school. That's that's a troubling, a troubling thing to to watch and, and to see happening in the city that I've grown up in. Uh, murders last year in, in last election, public safety was the number one issue, and that's what the mayor harped on last year. You know, he's going to counter insurgency block by block, street by street. It's not working. And, and I would love, actually, like I said, I'd rather not speak about the, the world be perfect and there'd be no issues, but right now, Brockton has a serious public safety issue. People are not safe. Murders up 36% last year. You know, a couple hundred shell casings have been found. I, I mean, it's ridiculous right now. We have several shootings. If you have a police scanner and the things that are going on in our city, I, I, there are no other priorities for me right now other than public safety. So, like I said, I, I appreciate the question. I think it's a wonderful question, but it has to be public safety. And then, like I said, opportunities for our youth. Thank you, Oh, that was good. You beat me by a second. (laughs) (laughs) This innocent little bell can scare these big men. I like that. Uh, Unfortunately, Mark, uh, you've you've done a lot of these, as you said, and uh, the the main priorities haven't changed because this mayor hasn't improved the city. That's why where I'm running, Um, public safety is the main issue. Uh, but I love to see the expansion of some type of a large community center, which we'll be working with the, be- with the school department and the libraries to de- bring in people and get them off the street, the kids, especially the youth, and also some of the homeless people. Um, that's a big issue in Brockton also. Um, we, we, the perception of Brockton has to change. It's not going to change overnight. But if we can improve it a little bit, it's, it's a plus. Right now, we have not improved in two years. All the promises this mayor has has given us 
and that's probably the reason why he's not here today, is because he has to defend his record. And his record, he's failed on every aspect of his promises. So I'm not here to tell you that I'm not going to raise taxes. I'm not here to tell you that I'm going to hire 50 police officers, as he did two years ago, and he's never, he hasn't even done anything, and nothing close to that. So um, as far as priority goes, unfortunately, the city hasn't changed. Uh, that's why our priorities are the same right now is public seconds. safety. So um, as mayor, I make sure that I'm going to make sure that public safety is changed. Mm-hmm. But I love to create a, a community service center for everyone to, 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 to be, go there. Thank I got you. one on you, Jacob. <laughs> you got two on you. I got two on you now? Okay. <laughs> what we're going to do I'm now is uh, my favorite part of the program, and that is going to the lightning round. The lightning round is when we <coughs> ask a series of questions. That are, it's a quick paced, it's fast, and it's either a yes or no answer. And yes or no means that. Yes or no, <laughs> no soliloquies, no long answers, or two sentences. The reporter will tell you two sentences is two sentences. It's not many long sentences run on sentences with commas. It's two sentences. <coughs> so it's a little bit faster pace. Is maybe an option? No. No, okay. no it's not. It's okay. yes no or no. Right in the fence. I That's got That's right. You. We're going to start with uh, Charles Mathewson because I believe it was your turn in the questioning and your first lightning round question for the candidates here for mayor of the city of champions the city of brockton there you go (laughs) my favorite lightning round question one sentence what is your favorite bad habit chris hopgood uh probably just caring too much about people (laughs) drinking red bulls my wife would agree with that (laughs) okay that was jacob taggart uh too much coffee too much coffee i drink it all the time (laughs) okay Mine's going to be a little different. It's not. An, it's going to be multiple choice. Okay. Other than crime, what would also be a top priority? Pick one: uh, education, economic development, dealing with the drug epidemic, or restoring fiscal responsibility to City Hall. Let's we'll go right down the line here. Start with Chris McMillan. That uh, would be fiscal responsibility because that that everything else will fall in place. Okay, Jacob Tagger. I would agree with that. Fiscal responsibility definitely has to be key. Okay. Chris Hopgood. I would say dealing with the drug uh, epidemic because without that, you're not teaching the kid people anything. Okay. Uh, Mark Lindy, a lightning round question. Everyone talks about senior citizens and veterans every two years. Are they funded properly or not? Let's is this start, a yes or let's, no? Let's, let's start no. down on this end. Let's start with Chris Hopgood. I would say absolutely not. Okay. Let's go then go to Jacob. I would say absolutely not, and I volunteer with the elderly okay. all the time. Okay, same question. It's the lowest budget in the city, absolutely not. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys a lightning round question. Is Brockton a lost cause when it comes to dealing with gun violence, yes or no? Jacob Tagger. I don't believe that. No, it's not a lost okay. cause. Okay, Chris Hopgood, absolutely same question. Absolutely not. Okay, Chris McMillan, never, same question. Never give up on Brockton. Okay, now let's go back to uh, Charles Mathewson here. Uh, if, when you're faced with a problem, are you more of an idealist or a pragmatist? Chris McMillan. I would say idealist. Jacob. Jacob. Positive thinking, positive results, sir. Idealist. Idealist myself. Mark Lindy, question for uh, candidates, lightning round. One word to turn around the image of the city of Brockton. Hmm. Oh, that's a tough question. I'm glad I'm not in your chairs. Let's start with oh, Jacob Tagger. Youth. Okay. Chris McMillan. Safety. Okay. Chris Hopgood. Rejuvenation. Okay. Kevin Tanchi. I'm going to go with another multiple choice here. Uh, pick one of the following answers to complete this statement. I'd be willing to raise taxes if it would. A, put more police on the street. B, hire more teachers for the school district. C, purchase equipment or vehicles for various departments. Or D, would rather not raise taxes and find other funding sources. We'll start with, who do you want to start with? Let's start with Chris Hopgood. Uh, I'm a big activist on the police, so that's, okay. that would be my choice. At times, tax raising taxes are unnecessary, so I, I would have to say police with the public safety issue. Okay. Chris McMillan? I would say, uh, what was D again? It was it was uh, police, teachers, uh, equipment for departments, or you wouldn't raise taxes. You you find funding elsewhere. Uh, I would I would probably go with uh, right now. We go with probably the teachers. Okay, Charles Mathewson, question. Pretend I'm a a, a, a big fat business owner. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me the number one reason I should relocate to Brockton. Chris Hopgood. Brockton has many, many 
people that are willing to work and they're looking for work and the prosperity is going to be great for your company. Okay. Jacob Tiger. Because of the people, the, the, cult, the various cultures and ethnic diversities Brockton has, let's go. Bring your money. Bring your money, sir. Brockton's the best. Chris McMillan. I, I agree with the people that are here that you can hire, but I also have uh, a lot of uh, uh, th things that Brockton offers. The uh, We can actually, actually offer you a tax increment finance to help you out with your taxes when you first get here. Okay. So It is lightning round. Sorry. Mark Lindy, lightning. question. That was quick. Lightning. <laughs> you, you, was you find out Brockton <laughs> has a really major budget crisis, worse than it already is. You, you have to decide, override, and how you would steer the people to vote. A lot of times elected officials say, we want to allow you to vote without me saying what I think. Mm -hmm. How would you handle that, Jacob? Two sentences? Okay. I don't think an override is necessary. I think fiscal management and audit is necessary. So I'm not going to be persuading anyone for an override. Okay. Chris McMillan, same question. You stating that we, if we're in the financial budget? Uh, if you're in a financial crisis and you're faced with the possibility of putting an override or a debt exclusion <laughs> on the ballot, what would you tell the voters as the leader of the city? If we have to do that, if it's uh, the last resort, I would tell them that either we lose the police and firefighters or in, and teachers, or you can you know pay a little bit more. So okay. it's your choice. Same question for Chris Hopgood. Yeah, as far as an override goes, I don't think that would be necessary because I, bel I believe accountability is uh, a major issue. You know, we need to go ahead and account for all dollars spent. Okay. Uh, one more lightning round question. Kevin Tachi. <coughs> this is a yes or no, so it's real quick. Do you feel the city is any friendlier or welcoming to new or current businesses than it was two years ago? Is yes, yes or, or no? no? Okay. Let's start with Chris Hopgood. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Jacob Tagger? Definitely not. Depends on who you know. Okay. Chris McMillan. No. Absolutely okay. not. All right. I think that's it for the lightning round. Now we're going to go to your closing statements, and we're going to reverse the order that we started in. And what we did when we started, we went with Chris McMillan, Jacob Taggart, and uh, Christopher Hopgood, I believe. So we're going to reverse that, and we're going to start with Chris Hopgood. And again, no longer than two minutes, but can be as short as you want, whenever you're ready. Hi. My name's Chris Hopgood. I'm running for mayor. And... I have the utmost interest in this position, and I respect the city of Brockton. I love the city of Brockton. I've lived here my whole life, and I just want to go ahead and see it improve. You know, I, I, I can't overemphasize the fact that I'd like to go ahead and see more community effort and community participation in crime reduction. I cannot overemphasize that. but. Uh, I hope you think about me on the 22nd, and I thank you very much, and I thank you, WATD, for having us. Thank you very much. That was Christopher Hopgood. That was his closing statement. Now we're going to go to Jacob Tagger. Again, I would like to thank WATD and BCA for holding this forum. This is great. I'm very, very proud to be a part of it. This election, in my opinion, comes down to one simple question. Each of us needs to look in the mirror and ask ourselves, do you feel safe? When you send your children to school in the morning, do you genuinely fear for their safety? When you go to the grocery store in broad daylight, do you feel safe? As business owners in Brockton, when opening or closing your business, do you feel safe? Public safety is and has to be the number one priority here in the City of Champions. Residents and business owners should feel safe. Now, we tried counterinsurgency. We went block by block, street by street, and it's not working. We are in desperate need of a new approach. We need compassionate leadership that will unite our community and bring people together to ensure we all feel safe, and I am that leader. Last mayoral election, Mayor Carpenter, as the opponent, made a very eloquent analogy, and it sticks with me today. He stated that it was time to change the picture. Well, Brockton, we changed the picture. It's time to change the game. I urge you all to help me truly change the game. Together, our city, the city of champions, can once again be made safe. My name is Jacob L. Taggart Jr. I am running to become the next mayor of the city of Brockton. On September 22, 2015, please vote for our future. 
vote for our safety and vote for Brockton. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was Jacob Tagger. Now, closing statement from Christopher McMillan. Thank you. I just well, I wish to thank again WATD and Brockton Community Access for hosting this event. My name is Christopher McMillan. Uh, I'm number one on the ballot on September 22nd, and I ask for your vote. Uh, I ask for your vote for these reasons. I have the most experience of all these candidates who knows how, to, who knows how this government is supposed to be run, who knows, the who knows the details of every department and how to get along with the, uh, the city council. I'm the person that's going to be in there. I'm the mayor who's, if elected, is going to be in there to make these changes that are necessary with the public safety, with the education part of it, with the seniors, with everything, every aspect of the city of Brockton. We uh, fell for this gentleman who is now the current mayor with a bunch of open, a bunch of words. Please don't do that again. Vote for your, vote your conscience. Uh, vote for the experience. Vote for change. Uh, this mayor is not doing a good job. That's why we're all in this race. We need someone in there that's going to be able to go in and step into that seat and into that position without having a learning curve. I'm that person. I'm the only person running right now besides this mayor who's done a lousy job that doesn't need a learning curve. I'm going to hit the road running. I don't care what, who you surround yourself with. The people who you surround yourself with are great, and I, and I commend them for volunteering. But once you're in the office of mayor, you have to make that decision. You can't go and call your committee to ask them questions or consult with your committee. You have the CFO come in and ask you a question, and you have to have a split-second results and answers to them. You can't ha tell him to hang on the phone, uh, hang on one second, I have to call my consultants. You need someone in there that's going to know what they're doing. And I commend these gentlemen next to me to putting their, their uh, name on, on a ballot, and I hope that if, if they succeed or if I succeed in the 22nd, we all stick together because this mayor is poison for the city. Uh, all three of us, I believe, agree. That's why we're here. But the city of Brockton, we absolutely need a change. We need someone in there that's going to do the job that he's not doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was Chris McMillan, the closing statement. You've been listening to a mayoral forum. The city is Brockton. The race is for mayor. The incumbent, Bill Carpenter, chose not to be here today. You were hearing his challengers, Christopher Hopgood, Christopher McMillan, Jacob Tagger. Uh, this is Monday Night Talk. This is Kevin Tachi's gig here, but you can hear this in its entirety. going to be up on the WATD website, 95.9 WATD.com. And you can also hear this, of course, on Brockton Community Access. And we're thanking Mark Lindy, thanks for sitting in with us. You're the uh, general manager of Brockton Community TV. Thank you for joining us. Charles Mathewson. Also, and of course, got Kevin Tachi here for Monday Night Talk. I'm Christine James. We'll be uh, providing complete preliminary election coverage on the 22nd. And you know what I always say, guys? If you don't vote, you don't have a voice. Mm, so true. get out there That's and true. vote your conscience. Absolutely. Kevin Tachi. We would also thank Mike for uh, handling the cameras and being here as well. He does a great job. But that's right. <laughs> Bell, had to do it. Bell for him. But uh, stay tuned. We're going to step aside just for a couple of moments. But when we come back, I promise, more Monday Night Talk. Don't go anywhere.